Hi everyone, welcome back to English Classes Online. In today's lesson, we are going to look at words that can be more than one part of speech. Uh, this is one of the interesting examples of the complexities of the English language. Some words of the language could mean different things in different contexts and some can be used as different word classes all right so that is exactly what we are going to look at in today's lesson words that can function as more than one part of speech if you are entirely new to this channel kindly subscribe to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button below make sure you click on the bell icon as well so that whenever a new video goes live on this channel you will be notified instantly let's dive into the lesson without much ado in this lesson we are going to look at the following items one why learn the parts of speech why is it important Two, what are the parts of speech? Uh, what do the parts of speech mean? Uh, you know, well, uh, you can see there is a typo here. This is not supposed to be there. What are the parts of speech? Okay. Three, words that can function as more than one part of speech so these are the items we are going to look at okay now let's begin to look at them one by one beginning with the basic question here why learn the parts of speech now learning the parts of speech enables you to understand how to construct meaningful sentences because the parts of speech or word classes are actually the building blocks with which English sentences are constructed. If you want to build a good house, you need the building blocks. And of course, uh, the parts of speech are the, words uh, are the building blocks with which English sentences are constructed. Knowing the role each part of speech plays in a sentence allows you to arrange them correctly in meaningful sentences. Like a building, the English sentence has a structure that consists of parts, and each part is occupied by a word class or part of speech. Of course, no one can build a house without knowing the parts that should make up that house in the first place, okay? Now, parts of speech, also known as word classes, are the divisions into which English classes are classified according to the function they perform in English sentences. Now, we are looking at what exactly are parts of speech. Okay? What do they mean? Now, every word belongs to a word class which defines its behavior and how it is used in sentences. Okay? Now, they are the parts that make up our speech. Now, just consider uh, the English speech or in the English sentence as a structure, okay? Now, a part is a unit or section which when combined with others make up the whole of something. English speech or sentence can be seen as a structure that has different parts, just like a house has different parts. So to use English correctly, you need to know these parts of speech and how to arrange them correctly in sentence formation. To form a sentence, you have to put different words together to form different parts of the sentence. So words 
form parts of the sentence and each word belongs to a different part of speech. So that is exactly what we are trying to explain here. Okay. Now let's look at past, the parts of speech and their uses. Okay. Let's look at the table. We begin with number one, noun. The function of a noun is to name or identify persons or things. That's why a noun is called a naming word. Now, the pronoun replaces a noun in a sentence to avoid repetition. When we say Matthew uh, is a young man, we have named Matthew. And if we say Matthew is a British, or if we say Matthew is a Canadian or a Nigerian, then we can't keep mentioning the name of Matthew. So if we want to talk about Matthew in different other ways, we replace Matthew with the pronoun he. So if we say Matthew is a young man, we can say he is a British, he is a, a, a trader, or he is a, a scholar, and whatever we want to say more about Matthew, then we can use the pronoun in place of the name Matthew. Three, verb. Now, the verb indicates action or state of being. That's what the verb does. Okay? That's what the verb does. Four, adverb. Ad adverb modifies a verb. To modify is to describe. So an adverb modifies or describes a verb, an adjective or another adverb. We may not have to go into details. You can look for uh, a video that, you know, already explains the parts of speech in greater detail. Five, adjective. An adjective modifies or describes a noun or a pronoun. Number six, pre preposition. A preposition indicates a relationship between two things. And of course, everything, you know, exists in relation to another. For example, you know, uh, if you say the students are in the class, you are talking about the relationship between the student and the class, and the preposition in indicates the relationship. The book is on the table. The preposition on shows you the relationship between the book and the table, and so on and so forth. Conjunction. Conjunction joins words, phrases, or clauses, uh, such as John and James, and is the conjunction. So those are the eight traditional parts of speech. Of course, there are, you know, differences in uh, the, the way different scholars, you know, classify this parts of speech. Some will list nine parts of speech by breaking the adjectives into uh, two, adjectives and determiners. So determiners become a different part of speech. Some scholars also argue that interjections uh, are different from other parts of speech, and in modern linguistics are not supposed to be classified as parts of speech. However, in traditional grammar, interjections are classified as parts of speech. And what does an interjection do? Interjection expresses feelings or emotions, such as wow, ouch, all right? And this brings us to those words that can function as more than one part of speech, which actually is the, the focus of today's video. Now, English words can mean different things in different contexts. So many English words can function as one part of speech in one context and another part of speech in a different context. 
Now, perhaps I should add that English words behave like chameleons. As chameleons change their color from one physical environment to another, so English words also change their meaning from one linguistic environment to another. Now, how we use a word determines its meaning. And context simply means how a word is used. So when we talk about context, we are talking about the linguistic environment within which a word is situated. Okay, so we are going to look at this, you know, when we look at a particular word being used as different parts of speech. Then it is because we are changing the meaning of the word from one context to another. Okay, these are some of the complexities of the English language. You, you will also uh, agree with me that a word may have the same form, the same spelling, but different sound, different meanings. You know, some words, you know, are like that. And of course, these are the complexities. But today we are really looking at words that function as more than one part of speech. So let's begin with uh, let's begin with the noun. Nouns can be used as nouns and also as verbs and adjectives in different contexts. Let's look at some examples. Uncle Mike bought a house at Lekki. Now let's look at the word house is used as a noun. So here the word house is the name of a thing, a house, okay, where someone lives in. Okay. He is one of the youngest house owners in our extended family. So here now, house is no longer used as a noun, it's now used as an adjective, okay, to modify the, the, the word owners. So perhaps uh, I should add here that the word house is used as an adjective, okay? In the first sentence, the word house is used as a noun. But in this second sentence, ma, uh, I mean house, is used as, a, as an adjective because here we are looking at the word house as something that describes owners, the youngest owners in our extended family. So if we remove the word house and we say he is one of the youngest owners, in our extended family. The question would be, what type of owner are you talking about? House owners, okay? So you, you, you may talk about car owners or laptop owners or land owners, but here you are talking of house owners. So the word house describes the type of owner that he is. So that is, you know, the use of a noun in one context as a noun and in another context as an adjective. Then let's look at how we can use the same word house as a verb. For example, the gallery houses different works of art. So here, the word house is used as a verb, houses. The gallery houses, which means the gallery contains or the gallery accommodates, okay, different works of art. So you can see the same word house used as a noun, used as an adjective, and now used as a verb. Okay, let's look at another example. Musa is a kind man. The word man is used as a noun here. Okay. He was employed to man the company's engine room. The word man is now a verb. It's no longer a noun. To man the engine room 
is to control or to take charge of the engine room. Okay? So, that is exactly uh, what we are talking about. So, let's erase the mark here. Now, the second word we want to look at here is verbs. Verbs in their various forms can function as different word classes in different contexts. Okay? This is a typo here. And then, so let's look at some examples. Debbie is cooking the evening meal. Here, the word cooking is a verb. In this sentence, cooking functions as the main verb within the verb phrase is cooking. Is is an auxiliary verb. Cooking is the main verb. Okay? The same word cooking is functioning as a different part of speech in the second sentence. Cooking is like a hobby to her. So here, cooking is used as a noun. Another example, she bought some cooking utensils. In this case, cooking is used as an adjective because cooking now describes utensils. If you say she bought some utensils, someone might ask, what type of utensils did she buy? She bought cooking utensils. So uten cooking is used to describe utensils, and so it is used as an adjective. Another example, Mark has written two novels. The word written is used as a verb here, but in another example, Nigeria has a written constitution. The word written is no longer used as a verb. It is now used as an adjective to describe the type of constitution Nigeria has. There is a country that has an unwritten constitution, but Nigeria has a written constitution. The word written describes the type of constitution. So written is an adjective in this sentence, OK? Another example, men always aid and will always aid. Now, the word a here is used as a verb. To a is to commit an error, okay? From the word a, you have error. Then, in another sentence, to a is human. So, in this case, to a... Uh, a is a noun in this sentence. And then, to A is a noun phrase. Now, if, if you watch a video uh, I previously uploaded on nominalization, you can see that one of the ways of nominalizing a verb is to add the preposition to. And when you once you add the preposition to, to the base form of a verb, you form a noun phrase, okay? That's one of the ways of nominalizing a verb. So to A, when you say to A is human, then you are using the word A not no longer as a verb, but now as a noun. And so A is a verb within the, uh, it, it now becomes, part of a noun phrase rather than part of a verb, uh, rather than a verb. It now becomes a noun functioning within the noun phrase, okay? So let's now look at other, uh, the last word we are going to look at here, uh, the last word class is, prepositions. 
Now, prepositions can also be used as different parts of speech depending on the context. Let's look at some examples. The family lived up the road. Up here is used as a preposition. And anywhere you have a preposition, it is followed by a noun or a noun phrase. And so here, the word up is a preposition within the prepositional phrase up the road. Up the road. He lives up the road. Okay. Okonkwa climbed up the hill. Again, up here is used as a preposition because it is followed by the, the noun phrase, the hill. Up the hill is the prepositional phrase. And so, up is used as a preposition here. Junior jumped up from his chair. Now here, we are no longer using up as a preposition. We are using up as an adverb. Because here, up uh, is modifying the verb jumped. Okay? And uh, so if you say junior jumped, then of course, you might want to know exactly how junior jumped. He, he either jumped up, you know, he jumped up. Okay? So it, that is the adverb describing the action. Junior's action of jumping. Junior jumped up. Okay? Now, you can say Junior jumped in excitement. That, again, describes jumped. But here, when you say Junior jumped up, it's showing us the, 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 the direction of his jumping. Okay? Nobody has ups all the time in business. So here, up is being used as uh, as a noun. Okay. Then you 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 sometimes also hear uh, the expression ups and downs. There can be ups and downs in everything we do in life. So here we are using up as a noun. Let's look at other examples. Okay. We have to use the staircase. They are repairing the up elevator. All right? The up elevator. Now, up is used as an adjective. <clears throat> To describe the elevator. So you may have an up elevator, the one that will take you up. Then you have the down elevator, the one that will take you from upstairs to the down floor. So the word up here is used as an adjective to describe the type of elevator they are repairing. And so we have to use the staircase instead of using the up elevator because that is being repaired. I think you need to up your game. You may have had this type of expression. So here we are using up as a verb. To up your game is to try harder and improve your skills at something. Okay? To up your game. And so here we we've come to the end of today's class i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did make sure you like the video and share it with your friends and relations uh, if you have any questions suggestions or comments kindly leave them in the comment section below i look forward to seeing you in the next class goodbye for now and remain blessed <music> Many thanks for watching today's video. A big thank you to all of you out there for being part of today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, kindly subscribe to this channel. Subscribe now as a way of giving us support. For notification about new videos, click on
on the bell icon you will find the bell icon click on it so that whenever a new video is uploaded you will be instantly notified if you have actually enjoyed the video like and share the video with your friends and relatives this is very important if you have any comments leave your comments below any questions any suggestions we would gladly receive them and respond promptly and positively to them see you in the next video i look forward to always see you in the new video thank you and